This is Jay Feng uh, from uh, University of Oklahoma. He's a postdoctoral uh, research associate with uh, Xu Guang. Uh, he comes to us uh, after, before that from uh, Beijing, where he got his PhD in 2015, and before that uh, uh, at uh, Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology in 2010. Got his bachelor's degree. So he's working with Xu Guang on uh, the impacts of assimilating novel observational data and high resolution model configuration on hurricane analyses and predictions. And he's also working with uh, Zoltan Toth at GSD on uh, grid point estimation of analysis and short range forecast error variances. And so he's here today to talk about his visitor project working on uh, a new measure of ensemble central tendency. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for introducing me. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, my talk is a uh, new measure of ensemble central tendency. And I would like to appreciate a lot of contribution from Jin Zhang, who is uh, the other. Hmm? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, who is the other PI. And also, I would like to appreciate the valuable comments from Zoltan Torres, Malakas Pena and also Sai Revela, who provides a critical software package. Uh, also, acknowledgments to Xia Chongzhou and Yue Jian Zhu who from EMC, who provide uh, some data. And this, I want to mention, this, this uh, project, this study is supported by the, or funded by the DTC Visitor Program. Okay, here is the outline of my, of my talk. First, I will give the background of some forecasts and uh, I will briefly introduce the pros and the cons of uh, traditional arithmetic ensemble mean, AM. And our, uh, after that, our motivation here is to offer an alternative to AM, which is uh, called a, a feature-oriented mean, FM. And I will introduce uh, technique and methodology issues. Uh, in the results, I will compare the AM and uh, FM Finally, I will give the summary and uh, discussion. So here, I will not uh, talk too much about it in some forecasts because everyone is very familiar. As we know that uh, uh, in some forecasts, are a series of uh, uh, free, for free, for uh, free integrated forecasts from initiated from uh, perturbed initial conditions. But due to the chaotic atmosphere and all these forecasts will diverge from uh, diverge from each other. So the arithmetic and some, arithmetic and some of mean is uh, defined as a very classic uh, definition of uh, the and some central tendency. Uh, it is usually uh, regarded as the most likely forecast state and also recognized as a more skillful forecast than. Uh, the control forecast and also the perturb each perturbed in some forecast. And this point has been demonstrated by a lot of previous literatures. So this figure, you can see that almost uh, every operational center in some forecast system, they all have, uh, uh, for the ensemble mean forecast, they all have a very uh, much lower RMS error than the control. And uh, this is also why in the past two decades, the AM gained significant use in weather and uh, climate forecasting. So the question is why the AM can reduce the forecast errors. And a lot of literatures have shown that the AM offers a nonlinear filter of uh, unpredictable forecast components across ensemble members. From these two figures, you can see that as the left shows uh, uh, a full resolution control forecast at day six, and the right shows an ensemble mean at the same value time. You can see that the right figure show uh, clearly show a smoother figure structure than the left one. So this is a smoothing effect, which caused a uh, much lower RMS, uh, RMS error uh, of the ensemble mean forecast. But this smoothing, I think, uh, and uh, it also causes the disadvantages of uh, the AM. The first point is that it, it uh, causes loss of variance at finer, fine scales. From the left figure, you can see, see that it shows a normalized power spectrum of forecasts at a different lead times from day zero to day 10. And the black shows a power spectrum of analysis and the red shows a, a power spectrum of AM. 
And you can see that with longer lead times, the variances at fine scales, they are uh, evidently become lower um, and extended to median scales at uh, 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 longer lead time. Okay, th this is the first time. The second is that we know the arithmetic mean is a grid point and a univariate definition. It is just uh, consider each grid point is independent and just uh, calculate the sum of mean. But uh, we know the atmospheric theory is a specially coherent, has specially coherent structures. So uh, here, give the example, the right bottom figure here shows that at we can see that at day eight, uh, all these and some members show a similar pattern, similar 12 pattern, but uh, this 12 at, is at different uh, uh, positions and with different amplitude errors. So for the AM, it uh, gives an unrealistic smoothing of the amplitude due to the positional displacement across all the members. So, Okay, so here we, in view of uh, the disadvantages of AM, here we try to uh, propose an alternative to AM, the feature-oriented mean. And our motivation here is that uh, the first, we want to retain more realistic variance in central tendency. We want to have uh, more variance on finer scales. And the second, we want to have more realistic amplitude to prevent those unrealistic smoothing. And the second is that we want to keep the field smooth because it is an efficient way to reduce RMS errors. Okay, the, and other, th these three figures here show a uh, schematic of our basic idea. Uh, the first figure here shows an example of uh, three and some members which uh, show uh, uh, the, the trough uh, in the three members, but they have different uh, Amplitude and the position at the different different positions. If we simply average these members, we can see that uh, we, we derive this blue curve. Blue curve here, we can see that is evidently presents uh, wide and shallow low pressure, which is uh, apparently unrealistic. So our basic idea here is to align all these the features in all these members to their mean position, just like the green curves here. And when, after that, uh, in the third figure, we just uh, uh, calculate the ensemble mean of all these uh, line members. We get the feature-based ensemble mean. So this is our basic idea. Um, and, we've, and we can see, also see that as a critical point is how to estimate and adjust the positional displacement. Here, we will use a fundamental tool, which is a fear alignment proposed by Revlo Sai in his a lot of uh, previous literatures. And fortunately, this D DTC, uh, this fear alignment uh, tool is a DTC code in DTC code repository so that we can directly use it. And about the tool itself, it, uh, the idea of this fear alignment, fear alignment tool is to variationally estimate a smooth 2D display displacement vector between two displayed spheres. And uh, here I give example, the left panel here shows uh, forecast and analysis at uh, the same value time. We can see that these two fears look similar, but they have a displacement of the features. So this fear alignment tool, it can, based on these two fears, it can estimate the right uh, figure, which shows like a uh, wind vector field. And these vectors here, it shows a uh, shows uh, uh, the magnitude and uh, the directions how, how we align these forecast to the analysis. For example, here's a different color shows the uh, uh, hurricane center. So the, it means that is a center in the forecast need to be uh, aligned northwest or to the analysis position. Okay, after we get this uh, displacement vector field, and uh, in the fear alignment, fear alignment package, we can also adjust uh, one fear uh, to, to the other one by these displacement vectors. And here I want to point out that uh, 
uh, this discipline vector is a is a smooth uh, in the, in the field my uh, field alignment technique we we need a unique smooth parameter and this parameter is to get a smooth two D discipline display, vectors because uh, we just uh, we we align all those features which have spatially coherent structures but we will not align those fine scale. Uh, structures which have lost their predictability. And it is a tunable parameter here. Okay, here I will, next I will uh, introduce a methodology. Uh, here I give a flow of uh, the method. The first step is that we were given an uh, ensemble member, like i is equal one, and we were compute the displacement vector between the given member, E and I, and uh, each of all other ensemble members. And uh, by this step, we can get the displacement vectors for all these members, D I1 to D I N. And the next step is to just simply calculate the mean of all these displacement vectors, and we get a mean displacement vector field, D I. And this DI, we think that this DI vector field, it will tell us how to align the given member uh, I to its to the main position, because it's it's a because it's very like uh, how to search a mass center of a body. Because if in the body we have n particles, and we know that the sum of uh, the vectors between the mass center and uh, uh, individual particles would be zero, so it's it's very like that idea. Okay, so this step we get the di display uh, mean display vector. So our next step is to simply align the given member along this di uh, this, uh, dv uh, field, and we get a new member in i prime. Okay, uh, this is a process of uh, the uh, the one member, and we were then we will repeat what steps one two three for each member of the ensemble. It's kind of like a loop over all these members, and we will get a, a new updated ensemble members. Okay, then final step is to just to calculate the mean of all these updated members. Uh, it's, it's our workflow. <clears throat> okay, to test uh, if uh, this methodology, uh, how it performs, we will give a uh, some uh, tests here we, with the data for the data we use a GEF as operational forecast data with one by one degree resolution and total we have 20 members and the sample period we use uh, October 1st to October 25 2013 uh, with 24 hour interval totally we have 25 cases and uh, we estimate uh, we, we evaluate as a 10 day forecast with 24 hour interval and for the variable here, we show the we just show the geopotential height at a 500 millibar. And uh, for the verification, uh, we use uh, control analysis as a reference. Okay, here we show an uh, example of the adjustment of uh, a seven-day and sum of fears. Here the red line here shows the uh, uh, geopotential height of uh, randomly selected uh, original member. And uh, for this member, we can estimate is, uh, all, all these black errors, which show it's how, how it, it should be aligned to the mean position. And the blue controls here show the adjusted member. Here we can see that uh, this black, black error is very clear spatial distribution. Like uh, over the Atlantic area, it has relatively small, very small, uh, displaying vectors, which means we do not need to align too much. But over the Pacific Oceans, we found that uh, uh, it has very significant, very evident uh, errors, which means we need to align more to adjust uh, the select member. Okay, if we highlight the, if we zoom in the highlighted uh, uh, error, and we can see that, uh, and we show the all all the uh, new ensemble members. We found that uh, the figure A shows original ensemble members uh, with different colors here. And the raw members uh, apparently have uh, large positional and amplitude deviation here. 
But uh, after we align all these members, we found that uh, the, all, 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 the, all these members are aligned to their main position, almost consistent, consistent position. And uh, after that, if we were just simply uh, average their amplitude, we get uh, the third figure here, which shows a red, red curve here, shows a, a FM, uh, contour, uh, FM, and uh, the black here shows a AM and the blue is the analysis here. And we found that the FM, it has much larger amplitude than the AM, and uh, it is much closer to the analysis. Okay, here is an example in one, one case. And uh, one of our motivation or our goal is to achieve uh, increased uh, uh, variance um, of the mean mean forecast. So here we show the grid point mean amplitudes uh, in which the climatolog climatology have been removed. And uh, we category all these grid points to three events, like uh, to normal events and media events or strong events. We found that in all these, all these categories, we found that for the FM, it show a larger uh, amplitude than the uh, AM. Uh, and uh, it had reaches about six to ten percent increase beyond uh, six days. Okay, now we if we go back to the the power spectrum uh, figure uh, we showed before, and we found that uh, uh, similarly the analysis of black curve and uh, the uh, AM is a red curve, and the FM is a blue curve here. Here we found that. Uh, uh, like I said before, the AM smooths out a small to medium scale uh, structures with increasing lead time. But we can see that the FM forecast is present more medium to small scale structures than the AM, especially for the medium range forecasts. Uh, but we can still see that it has a gap from the spectrum distribution of uh, the analysis. This is because in the FM we still uh, use a ensemble mean, so it may fear out part of the uh, the variances. Okay, this is I think this is another curve. We we have a certain increase of uh, the variance at finer scales. Uh, okay, and uh, people may care about the 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 sample mean RMSE and the PSA of AM and. Uh, FM. Here we show the global mean, uh, we, no, we show the error mean results for the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The left panel shows the RMSE and the right shows the PAC. Uh, the, the, solid, uh, the solid line here shows the ensemble mean and for the black is AM, for the red is uh, FM. We can see that uh, uh, the AM and FM, they, they show very similar RMSE and the PAC. It's kind of uh, like ba bad news, but it's still within our expectation because the AM is designed to minimize the errors. It uses uh, it uh, by smoothing all those uh, structures. Um, but we can see that as a the mean, uh, the mean error of all the members of FM is significantly better than that of AM. You can see the dashed, uh, the the red dashed curves here is has much lower RMSE than the uh, the black dashed curves here. But this is below, uh, this is because. Uh, part of or most of the positional errors in individual members have been removed for the FM members. Um, but we still see that uh, we still see that uh, the FM has much smaller spread here. The, uh, the red vertical bars is have smaller range than the black bars. Okay, but uh, in, in all, this, this uh, the performance of the individual members is not our focus here. Our focus is for the ensemble mean forecasts. Okay, but uh, in view of uh, the advantages of the FVM in the previous slides, so we inspired by 
those results, we still want to compare the forecast stick gear for extreme events for the FM and AM. So we selected the the, the truth with the standard, uh, which is beyond the 1.5 standard deviation. And uh, we average all the, the uh, errors of for all these grid points. And we found that uh, the FM here uh, performs better than the AM for the extreme events, especially for it reaches uh, like uh, for northern hemisphere to reach like ten uh, percent uh, lower of RMS error for northern hemisphere and six uh, percent lower for southern hemisphere at uh, six to day uh, six to seven days. Uh, you can see the red curve here. The peak is near the six to seven days. And uh, if we also look at the number of the grid points percentage of a better FM over AM, we can still see that uh, at the initial time, they have very close percentage, nearly 50% uh, half to half. But with longer lead times, uh, uh, percentage of the grid points for uh, with a better FM is apparently higher than the FM and uh, at the end the AM at uh, and uh, similarly, it reaches a peak at about uh, seven days here. So, so here I give a summary here. The, uh, the FM, the design of FM is to align the features in individual members to their main position and uh, then average its amplitude. And we found that the FM performs better than the AM in predicting extreme events. Uh, it is about uh, reaches about a um, six to ten percent RMSC reduction at six to eight day lead times, and it shows a continuous improvement beyond three days. And FM shows a larger amplitude in forecasts, about a six to ten percent uh, uh, larger uh, enhanced uh, amplitude beyond six days. And FM forecasts recognize more medium to small scale features. Uh, or variances is the end AM. Okay, here we, we give uh, some discussions. The first is about the computational efficiency. And for the FM, it is very easy to uh, conduct a parallel uh, computation because each member here is processed independently so that we can submit a process of uh, uh, each individual member to uh, uh, each core, for example. And uh, here, we, it it t takes about one minute to calculate the displacement vector between two fields uh, for, for the, this uh, glo global field with one by one degrees. So it means that if we have 20 members and we, uh, if, and we have 20 cores, we, we, we need about 20 minutes to, uh, to calculate uh, the, the mean uh, FM field for one, one field and one, one lead time. And uh, for the uh, computational cost, we, <clears throat> we, found we, we can also use the displacement vector as a first guess for next lead time. It means that if at day six we calculate the displacement vectors, we can use it as the Im input to the minimization of uh, the calculation at the next lead time. Uh, and currently, for the fear alignment uh, part, we use a MATLAB code. And uh, I also heard that maybe for, fortune code is currently being developed. Uh, so maybe in using the fortune code, it may accelerate the computation. And uh, the other thing is that in our experiments, we use uh, fixed uh, smooth parameters. Maybe for different lead times, we may use smooth, different smooth parameters for a better performance. Because we know that for longer, for longer lead time, uh, more Final scale forecast will be uh, unpredictable, so we do not uh, need to align those structures. Uh, and the smooth parameters may be focused on larger scale uh, features. And about our future work here, uh, I, uh, we think that uh, we can extend this uh, FM uh, algorithm to other variables like uh, the precipitation. Uh, people pay a lot of attention to, and uh, also about the hurricane intensity and the track forecast. And uh, our expectation that uh, 
the FM may have enhanced the performance for especially the hurricane intensity forecast because if we because if uh, the hurricane you know they have a uh, positional displacement if we simply uh, average the their amplitude their, their inten- uh, the uh, if we simply average their like uh, surface level pressure field or we, we may get an underestimated intensity so uh, it could be a uh, uh, use for application in the future. So, yeah, that that's all. Uh, but the the paper is still uh, submitted under revision. So, uh, yeah, you can refer to the details of our algorithm in the future paper. Yeah, thank you. Questions. One minute, you mean resolution is one degree by one degree? What's the resolution? Yeah, for, for current data, it's uh, one, one by one degree. Uh, global? So global, yeah. So yeah, if. It's pretty close, actually. Yeah. Basically, one degree by one degree model is very common. Right now. It's, uh, e- the real one is 10 times larger than that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, for the global, maybe... Global is 13 kilometers around. The uh, so one degree is... Uh, uh, Sambo is 25 or something. Yeah. 25, okay. Yeah, and also another question is actually, since it's key to find these uh, main features, if it's larger trough, larger hurricane, it's easy. But if there are lots of small features, how do you decide which is you, which one you... Basically, if there are a couple features in your field, can you... Calculate that the efficiently. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So, so I think that that will involve uh, the critical parameter, the the, the the smooth parameter, because here, because because for 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 example, the global field here, we know that those those finer scale features, uh, not features, fine scale structures, they they have already been unpredictable, so we do not need to align them. They they do not have features. So we we do not need to align them. So the uh, smooth para- parameter here is to decide uh, which which group of uh, uh, pretty predictable features we, we we can align. You know, for for example, like it, it, if it is one hundred, it means that uh, uh, larger scale than than one hundred uh, wave, uh, waves we we need to align. They they have information. They have signals. We need to align. But uh, those smaller than than the 100 uh, wave number of features, they 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 they're meaningless. We we do not. So f- for the convection uh, application, I think that uh, uh, this parameter needs to be tuned. Yeah, and we may consider more about how uh, the how the, the those convection uh, structures the, the, the behave. Yeah. We may tune tune that uh, parameter. Okay, yeah, I think this basically under the big picture that uh, how to deal with the displacement error. Yeah. We did a simulation, we are pretty good to correct the, the magnitude, but if the feature is displaced, two features, the yeah. position and the, the background, it's really hard to, to basically to include this simulation if the, the basically this placement error is much harder to correct yeah. than just magnitude error. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, I noticed that there are, there have been several studies about the, the application of this FA tech uh, tool to the DA, uh, especially how to adjust the, the, the how to adjust the, the first gas sphere. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have, I also, there, there are several studies about this. Uh, yeah, and, uh, also, like uh, the the hurricane the hurricane data simulation, people use the relocation package, right? Yeah, relocation. yeah. This this is also the to 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 aim aim to do that. Yeah. yeah. Do you know case booster? Case what? in a case booster. Case dissertation is study this. Okay. How to moving storm around to make it better, but it's twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> case dissertation. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 he's in caps. 
Yeah. It's close to that. If I talk with him, he may have more idea how. Yeah, but it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So, it's, uh, uh, my arrow first, then do average. So we get better feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you all, we here we all focus is in some of me. How to? Yeah. Yeah. So to get a improved uh, representation of the example of central tendency. Yeah. So I have a very basic question. How do you find ninety-one? So you concentrated on on um, adjusting one field. Yeah. Um, and then you talked about applying it to other fields. So. Do you do that independently for each one of those fields? And if you do, then do you end up with something that's physically consistent for your overall ensemble? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, the first is that uh, we process uh, each member independently. Uh -huh. OK, we, we align each member to their main position. And we found that their main position may be, may be close. Yeah. And the second is that. Uh, I'm not quite sure that because I, I, I saw the, because of FA technique is produced by Cy Reveler. Yeah. I, I re read his studies. He may have uh, some uh, uh, non divergence const constraint in, in the minimization. That may be used to make sure that, uh, like, the mass, mass conservation or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it has some, uh, uh, where is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah, he, he may have some constraint in the in the, in the, in the okay. minimization. Yeah, curious. yeah. But your, your technique is not multivariate. I thought it was multivariate, so you would calculate a covariance field for multiple variables. Uh, currently, it is uh, for one one variable. Okay. Yeah, but in the future, it may yeah. be extended. Can you use the DV calculator for variable to apply to all others like uh, you calculate for height? Your plans to temperature, wind, all apply to the same. Basically, you're moving the system consistently. Everything moving. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's important. Is that yeah. What you did, or you just try one variable? Uh, no, no. Currently, I just try one variable. So yeah. I think that's the future. Yeah, I think it would be okay. easy to just apply that to see. So I guess I guess my converse question is: Would you end up with a different vector if you focused on features in different fields? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that that's a good yeah, question. But the first, just using same vector dv to see if, we, like, you calculate dv from height, but apply to temperature to see if it can improve too, mm -hmm. because it's supposed to consistent, right? It should be. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it's very okay. interesting to apply that. To try that. Actually. Yeah. Right. Um, you are doing this um, um, for each grid point, right? Uh, well, this distance, yeah. uh, it's, the distance is also in terms of of the height of the 500 hectopascal surface, right? Yeah. So the distance that you define is, uh, or the displacement that you define here is the differences at each grid point between the ensemble mean and each ensemble in the value of the height of the 500 hectopascal at that grid point? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, actually, I, 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 because I, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. What? So actually, the other action using these vectors to move the features uh, around the space. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, because I didn't introduce too much about the, 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 the it's technique. It's clear yeah. to me how this displacement is. Uh, it is uh, how this move is done, I mean. So it, this is a nonlinear cost function minimization problem. So you have two image that's different. Okay. And you want to minimize the difference between two image, moving one image with the flow uh, with these vectors. Okay. And you solve for the vectors by minimizing that different square. So, so the vectors are the, wind, uh, are the wind? Cross field? domain. Cross domain, not the wind. The whole domain. These are displacement vector fields. But it's a minimization field. Displacement vector fields between the mean and each and yeah. member? Yeah. Between each member, two members. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Ah, between every, every every two members. Yeah. Okay, and it's a cost function. Yeah. Eric, this was like image warping. Is this image warping? Is this the same thing? Or? <laughs> so I've been trying to figure out. 
Yeah, uh, it's it seems that way. I mean, field alignment. But uh, I got here a little late and I missed what what is AM. Okay. Uh, the AM is uh, is a classical definition of the ensemble mean is uh, just a grid point average of you know which is. Just mean uh, the expected value of uh, at each individual grid point. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you get some kind of average field. Yeah. And now you're realigning something in that field, and, but it seems like you you have because you're showing these troughs, and so you're moving it based on a single trough. Uh, no, it's uh, we we move it to. So like, like, like here, we move it to their uh, move individual and some member to or features in the individual members into their mean position, and mean position is uh, estimated by uh, idea just like like the mass center. Uh, so so we, we uh, the first thing we, we calculate is a discipline discipline vector between the given member and all other members. Okay. okay. And you do the averaging. Oh, averaging. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's similar. Actually, a former visitor of ours when he was looking at this. Yeah. Um, and he, I didn't know whether you got to interact. With him. No, I was, it was years ago. So you would have been around. <laughs> so, if there are 20 ensemble members, you're doing 20 times 19 comparisons. There are di displacement vectors. Is it all possible comparisons? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Or mutations. Yeah. I have a comment about the cost too. So size method is nonlinear cost function minimization. So that's probably why it costs a little bit uh, more than a linearized problem. So if you, for example, I'm kind of an expert on this method because <laughs> I've been developing multi-scale version of, of this. So it's like uh, solving for this vector at the larger scale so we can linearize the problem. And it's basically called optical flow. And that's much cheaper than solving nonlinear cost function. And you can do it multiple layers. I, I know that size is also solving the nonlinear cost function with a, some kind of a multi scale solver. Yeah, so S, SCA like yeah. it, it scale like cascade it's alignment. It, it seems like with the optical flow, though, the fields have to be really close to being identical. Yeah, so linearizable. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. But what, what the, I mean, the, the language, uh, the tool you use, MATLAB code or? For the optical flow? Yeah. I just code the Python prototype. It's like uh, the horn and shunk method. Uh, okay. yeah. And also, I want to comment that you don't find too much of a small scale energy uh, va variance in the spectrum increase for the FM. Yeah. The pre probably because when you uh, constrain the uh, direction, uh, the displacement vector will be very smooth, so it's mostly aligned the large scale component. So the small scale is um. out of place. So they eat yeah. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just curious, actually, the, the, this works actually for the larger scale, but uh, if you have a couple of small scale around, uh, can you do just basically align this each small scale? But uh, you will need more frequent cycling too, because at that scale, if you have uh, several hours difference between the forecast, it will become very different shape. So yeah, if, yeah. even though you can align the, the location, it will be still different shapes to average. Yeah, and uh, actually, so really I did a little bit for thunderstorm yeah. dissemination, but one problem we got into trouble, just like the recent question, actually, the balance between variables. Yeah. You can move stuff around, but uh, when you restart to forecast, you can you basically find that your, your storm system is ruined, actually, because of balance. Yes, yeah, yeah, I don't like that. It's, everything is not balanced. I just destroy everything, make your forecast much worse because you're moving. This is the if for diagnostic, I can mm -hmm. see it's, it's, it's good. You don't do forecast, you do better. But uh, yeah. if you continue, it will be in trouble. I just, yeah. yeah. It's also a research problem to reduce those imbalances caused by data simulation. Yeah, basically, displacement yeah. error between this uh, forecast, background, everything is uh, is 
it, it, it's a topic we have, we have yeah. struggled for many years. It's just yeah. a new application to generate this need. Yeah, yeah. As you said, it needs more work to for for the application uh, to data simulation. Yeah. It's a uh, yeah, it's 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 just a preliminary test. I yeah. yeah so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.